In our previous video, we saw how we can analyze a while loop that the cost inside isn't constant. In that case, we had a for loop embedded inside of a while loop. Here we have a while loop embedded inside of a while loop. Just like we've seen with every problem so far, you begin by analyzing the innermost and most nested stuff. So I'm gonna begin by analyzing this while loop here that's stuck on the inside. When I analyze problems like this, I like to color coat my notes a little bit so I can keep track of, especially when I have two while loops, what pertains to what. So I'm gonna do in purple all the stuff pertaining to the innermost while loop. So we have iteration and the value of the variable for that while loop, which in this case is J. J is initialized to be one. And if we look at the code, we update J by adding by four. So after one iteration, it looks like five. After two iterations, it looks like nine. After three iterations, it looks like 13. And this might not be that helpful. Maybe I could rewrite this in a smarter way, but it's not necessarily obvious. So I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. But if I stare at that for long enough, maybe you go, hey, that looks a lot like one plus four K, which again should be unsurprising. We're continually adding. It looks like multiplication therefore. And we wanna figure out when does this stop? Well, this stops when that generic expression, one plus four times K is equal to our stopping condition. And remember what we did before, which is we wanted to specially signify this value of K. So we called it K prime. So let's do that here. We solve that for K prime. So we subtract one from both sides. We have four K prime is equal to two I minus one, then divide by four and we have K prime equals two I minus one all divided by four. And then we look back at the code and see what do we need to do? Well, here, that while loop, the inside takes constant time. We're doing basic arithmetic on both lines. So the running time of that code, and again, we're gonna lump in lines five and lines 10 with this, is going to be C times the number of iterations, which is two I minus one divided by four. So here, that wasn't so bad. Maybe we can clean this up a little bit by scooting over our iteration table a smidge. So that part, really not so bad. We can now express the running time of that while loop in a closed form expression. It's C times two I minus one all divided by four. Now let's try and analyze the outer while loop. Let's come up with a color for that. I'm gonna do that all in green. So let's highlight the while loop in green so we can easily remember what we're doing. And for that while loop, we need to make another iteration table. So let's do that. So off to the side in green, I'm gonna make an iteration table for I. So iteration and I. For this iteration table, I need to keep track of what does I start at? I starts at one and it's updated by multiplying by three. Therefore, after one iteration, it will be three. After two iterations, it will be three times three, which is three squared. After three iterations, it'll be three times three squared, which is three cubed. After Oh God, panic. We've already used K. We need another letter here. For whatever reason, I like making this letter very, very distinct from what we've done before. So we're gonna choose gamma, fun Greek letter. And my pattern looks like three to the power of the iteration. So my pattern looks like three to the gamma. There's nothing special about gamma. You can call this whatever you want. A lot of students choose L because it's next to K in the alphabet. I decided to use Greek letter gamma because I like the Greek letter gamma. So. This stops when our pattern, our generic expression three to the gamma is equal to the stopping condition, which in this case is N. And just as we did in purple, we're not gonna, gonna just call this gamma. We'll call it, I don't know, gamma prime, some other symbol to make it a little bit differentiated from our pattern that we noticed. We're gonna solve that for gamma prime. So we get gamma prime equals log base three of N. And now we need to combine our information somehow. And this is where we could try to sort of develop all the tables and stuff that we did before. However, that was just a justification for our technique that we are going to use. So always we can express this runtime in the following manner as T of N is equal to the sum over the values of I of the cost of the body of the loop. Let's even write that symbolically. This is the cost of body of loop, which we write as the sum 
over the values of i of whatever the cost was. In this case, it's that stuff that's in purple. To really showcase what's happening, we're just going to write it in purple as well. So our cost here is c times 2i minus 1 divided by 4. And now we recontextualize that summation in terms of the pattern we noticed for i. I know i is equal to 3 to the gamma when the iteration is gamma. So I rewrite this summation in terms of gamma. We write this as a sum from gamma equals 0 to gamma prime, just like we did with the previous problem with k. There was nothing sacred about k. It's just whatever the expression is in that table. And I replace i with the pattern I noticed in terms of gamma. So I have 2 times i is equal to, according to my table, 3 to the gamma. So we have 3 to the gamma minus 1, all divided by 4. And maybe I can even plug in gamma prime at the same time if I wanted to. Gamma prime is log base 3 of n. So I'll write that in green to identify exactly what's happening. So this is log base 3 of n. Similarly, I'm going to write that 3 to the gamma as 3 to the gamma, but in green. So I can identify sort of where is this information coming from? And now we just need to analyze the summation. We're again back in our previous units material. However, we can decide to do that. We can do it. This is an increasing geometric sum. Our technique for analyzing these has always historically been to analyze it by using some formulas. So we're going to try to work around in whatever way you can to make our formulas work. So this is equal to. I'm going to factor out constants because that usually works out nicely and factor out the C over four. And then I have the sum from gamma equals zero to log base three of N of two times three to the gamma minus one. I'm going to comment on something for summations that we often forget, which is we should have parentheses around that to signify that all of that is stuck inside of the summation. And then we close our bracket. Now I'm going to distribute that summation across the subtraction. So we have that this is equal to C divided by four times the sum from gamma equals zero to log base three of n of two times three gamma. I'm actually going to undo this summation and factor out that two at the same time. So I write this as two times the sum from gamma equals zero to log base three of n of 3 to the gamma minus the sum from gamma equals 0 to log base 3 of n of 1. And now I have two summations I can actually deal with. I can use my finite geometric sum formula on the first summation, and the second summation is a constant summation. Gamma does not appear inside of it. Therefore, I can take the sum and multiply by the number of terms in the summation. So this is equal to c over 4 times quantity 2 times parentheses, we have the common ratio to the top bound plus one minus one divided by the common ratio minus one minus the second thing we take the sum and which is just one and multiply by the number of terms. The number of terms is the top bound minus the bottom bound plus one. That second term we can now see is not so bad. It's just log of n plus one. Not so ugly. The first term we have a bit more algebra to do. We have c over 4 times, we have 2 multiplied by something divided by 2, so those 2s cancel out for me, and I have 3 to the log base 3 of n times 3 minus 1, because all my constants cancel, minus log base 3 of n minus 1. And now I can just do a bit more simplification. We have c over 4 times, just as we saw in the past, we can cancel out the 3 and the log 3 and write this as 3n minus log base 3 of n minus 2. Which may look really messy, but it's a closed form expression. I didn't do any bounding here, so I can just identify the complexity from this. So my final conclusion is that t of n is once again in theta of n. So that's my final complexity that I have. And just so we can identify what's happening, maybe we can go back and label our steps. This helps some people to memorize what's happening and associate the right words. I said them all loud while I was doing them, but labeling them explicitly can sometimes help. So the first thing we did was 
re-express the sum in terms of gamma, re-express in terms of gamma. In the previous problem, that was k. In this problem, it was gamma. We then factored out constants, factor out constants, which works because of linearity. We then again use linearity, so we use linearity, meaning we can distribute across summations and factor out constants. And then we used our formulas, so we simplified the sums, used formulas. And then a whole heap of algebra at the end to keep simplifying. And the used formulas, we used two different formulas, really. We had a constant summation, that's our nice easy formula, and we had a geometric sum formula, which is a bit messy, but we've seen it a couple of times already, so hopefully not so bad. So, the while loop inside of a while loop, the only reason this problem was a little more tedious than the last one is because the inside expression looked a bit messier. It was 2i minus 1 divided by 4. But it was really the same thing. The inner while loop didn't add much complexity compared to the inner for loop. The real kicker was that the while loop was stuck on the outside. That's where things started to go a little haywire. So for some of these problems, they really won't be too bad. Unless the while loop is on the outside, that's when you sort of have to spend more time and reevaluate these summations.